Well, one strategy for avoiding debt this Christmas is to buy nothing. Joining me in studio is Michael Corrin, host of The Arena on Sun News Network and author of Heresy, 10 Lies They Spread About Christianity. And from Winnipeg, we are joined by Aidan Enns, the founder of the Buy Nothing Christmas Movement and the creator of G's Magazine. Katie Sawatsky of Winnipeg is with uh, Aidan. Thank you all for joining us. Great. It's good to be here. Aiden, I'm shocked, first of all, to see you with a Santa cap on. You must have loaned that one from somewhere. Okay, well, tell us what is Buy Nothing Christmas? Literally buy nothing? Well, for, for some of us organizers, yes, it literally is a buy nothing Christmas. And uh, it's we know Christmas as the shopping frenzy of the year, and some of us think it's it's got to slow down, or even if we say stop, people stop in their tracks and go, what, is he serious? And I'm serious. We should stop shopping uh, so much at Christmas time. So we're all for a buy nothing Christmas. Okay. So Katie, he's roped you into this. You're sitting by him there. You're going to. This is your first year, right? You're going to try buy nothing. Yeah, I'm going to try it. Okay. Have you got Have you got loved ones, kids? Like, how are people going to do this? Well, uh, practically, um, I have a husband and a little 15 month old uh, boy. Um, gift giving is very inherent in my family culture. Um, I'm not against gift giving. I, I want to give gifts to my friends and family, but I'm uh, just choosing this year to try and make most of them. Or, um, like Christy said before, give the gift of an experience, maybe helping my mom with uh, making Christmas meals, um, stuff like that. Okay, and do you give them a warning that this is coming? <laughs> I have given my mom a bit of a warning, yeah, about that. Okay, uh, thanks for sharing that with us. Stick around there, Aiden. Michael, so what do you think? Is a buy nothing Christmas a realistic and wonderful way to approach Christmas? Well, it's appalling. The first thing they should do is buy a copy of Heresy, 10 Lies They Spread. Uh, we knew you would say that, yeah. 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 Uh, we've got to be careful here. Look. Uh, Worshipping and loving Jesus and buying some gifts for those you love are not mutually exclusive. There's also, with all due respect, a danger of, of crass um, anti-consumerism and, and anti-materialism. If it's in place of what Christmas is supposed to be, remembering the birth of Christ, you have a problem. But if you're so anti-consumerist and anti-materialist, you've got to be careful that you're not turning Jesus... Instead of you becoming more like Jesus, you want Jesus to become more like you. Jesus, the anti-consumerist. <laughs> I don't think... Unless that's the okay. va a vague apocrypha. He didn't say that. So you, did not, you do not think, then, that consumerism is threatening a Christian identity at oh, Christmas. Oh, yeah, of course it has. It's, it's largely destroyed it, but it, it destroys most things. As I say, crass, uh, strident consumerism is always bad, but crass, strident anything is bad. Extremism is bad. And when you become so obsessed with opposing materialism, you have to wonder what your motives are. Again, moderation, it sounds cliché, but moderation in most things. And uh, I, I'm a, I hope I'm a, a, okay. I try hard to be a good Christian. I try hard to be a good father and husband by buying a few nice gifts oh. to my family. Okay, eight. Um, it sounds like Michael is trying to lob over, uh, wondering <laughs> about your motives on going completely by nothing at Christmas. Tell us what are your motives? Well, for me, the biggest thing is uh, to find a way to alleviate suffering in the world. And I think that the way our, our, our capitalist consumer economy is structured, uh, it's fostering more suffering. So we need a way to pull back. Now, as a person of faith, I identify as Christian. I want to really uh, consider how the Christ figure enters the age of empire in his day. And he went to the periphery and had, he hung out and brought healing and hope to those that, on the margins. And I want to go and do likewise. And I look at myself and I realize I'm in the belly of em empire. I'm one of the benefactors of the spoils of colonialism, of the exploits of capitalism. But Aiden, so, I yeah. don't think I've ever <laughs> inflicted suffering on anyone by giving them a gift. <laughs> First of all, I can, I can hear in your answer that you've agreed that there's suffering. Now, how do gifts play in it? Well, gifts become a symbol of our love. 
but they're also a symbol of a way how our culture operates. Are we allowed to interrupt? Yeah, well, go, yeah okay, Michael's just, he's almost because, jumping off the chair. You know, okay, take a, take a... I'm hearing North American bourgeois conceit. First of all, if you really want to make the poor suffer, say, don't buy anything, because then <laughs> they don't make things and they lose their families. I mean, capitalism is a flawed system, but if you've lived under socialism and if you saw the former Soviet bloc, if you're as old as I am, that really stank, that was real suffering. I, I believe in, uh, in a controlled free market, a mixed economy. But look, with all due respect, I'm sorry, but th these are cliches, the age of empire. Jesus worked with those on the margins. He worked with those at the very center. The whole point of, about Jesus was once we say, you know, he was here to be a revolutionary, he, it, this is arrogant, this is, this is pride. This is, you've got to be very careful here because Jesus could have done that and the whole world changes within a moment. He didn't. He wasn't here to say change the economy. He was here to say there is a revolution in terms of faith, relationship and again if you're buying your kid a new car you've got some problems there I mean come on no child should be bought a new car but if you're buying some nice little gifts to say on this feast day remembering the birthday of Jesus Christ this is for you that's a beautiful thing to do yeah I eight, eight in yeah this reminds me of the, the days growing up as a young evangelical where if I kept a pure heart and participated in the, in the system the economic system of the day and sought to be kind and generous things would be fine but something's changed. In addition to that personal gospel, that personal sense of well-being and well-meaning, I've added a social dimension. I've also added insights from other movements, such as the Mahatma Gandhi. And when I'm listening to Michael talk, uh, I can't help but think of how Gandhi would have moved in an age of empire when they were colonized by the British. Well, he moved and, uh, very badly and impoverished <laughs> the country. And, and India only got rid of its poverty in the past 15 to 20 years when they said, Gandhi may have been an interesting figure, but this idea that we have to uh, be obsessed with the spinning wheel, no, they've created a new middle class that's liberated, we think, more than 250 million people out of poverty. So, again, by the way, I'm not an evangelical, but... It's not about being simplistic. It's not about saying, I'm just going to be nice to people. Of course, I mean, that's facile. It's more than that. But when, when you believe you have the right alternative economic system, Jesus the capitalist, Jesus the socialist, Jesus the, the, the Christian Zionist, Jesus the Palestinian, be careful of making Jesus, I said, as I said earlier, more like you. You but, need to become more like him. But I think what Aidan, if I can come to your defense there for a moment, Aidan, <laughs> Michael, he's just trying to shake up the amount I think I consume. The, the, the debt load is highest it's been in the last eight years, personal consumer debt load. What I want to just observe in Michael's comments is that one thing that's very important has happened here. We've shifted our attention from just an, a neutral good giving gifts at Christmas to looking at the economic structures in which we participate. He happens to be endorsing capitalism. Why not? <laughs> Uh, well, Michael, it sounded like you were. <laughs> Aiden, let's t take this back one from Michael here again. You were starting to say it's not about capitalism, but for you it's about what? I'm feeling that we are swept up in the way that the world is working. And it participates in, uh, like our gift giving, for example, it reinforces the glory that some few have in wealth and then it continues to impoverish us. You mentioned the mental health and others, it's more uh, physical impoverishment. It keeps these imbalances in check in the way that we conduct Christmas. And that's so far from the spirit of the gift of life that the coming of Christ was. So what I seek to do is to make my gift giving patterns in sync with a liberation of uh, the folks, especially at the margins. I know you don't want to endorse buying gifts for Christmas, but G's magazine's pretty cool. Maybe people could buy a uh, subscription to your magazine for Christmas. Would that be okay? You know... <laughs> you know, you don't even like that. <laughs> you know, one of, one, of the, one of the hardest discussions we had at the last issue, we just put out an issue of G's magazine... I've uh, got it, yeah. ...for Christmas time. And there's a campaign that we support, Buy Nothing Christmas. At the same time, <laughs> We're a small magazine that relies on subscriptions. We don't get any re revenue from advertising. We need people to buy the magazine. Oh, yeah. and, and <laughs> don't worry, Michael's already plugged his book. You oh, go ahead, plug hypocrisy. that magazine. I smell a little hypocrisy. And we, wa we, <laughs> we wanted them, and I, I have an answer for that, but we wanted them to buy gifts. So what we did was uh, what we do at G's Magazine, and that's we're transparent. There's no clean-cut answers anymore. This is yeah. a very complicated time. Yeah. Uh, what we did in the magazine was we had a little fun with it. We put a cartoon in there where you can buy a gift for someone's birthday. It doesn't have to be for Christmas. <laughs> but we still get the message out. And that shows how we're really 
you know, it's torn. We participate in the society, and yet we seek to be agents of redemption. Okay, well, you know, you went all the way out with that little elf hat there. So <laughs> thank you very much, Aiden. Thank You're you. Welcome. And Michael, all right, we're going to be back uh, with more on this, but now it's time to find out what you think. Do you typically spend more on Christmas now than you did a decade ago? More or less? Take a, take a vote on that. Let us know by uh, phone or email your answers. And our studio audience is taking a live vote, and we'll have those results in a moment. But coming up, more with Michael Korn as we discuss the religion of consumerism. <laughs> 